Hey guys, how's it going? I'm coming to y'all with yet another Commander deck tech, and this time it is over my Afara, God of the Polis. This is a blue-white flicker kind of, uh, not really the same style deck as Rune, but I'm going for a similar theme. I'm trying to flicker my creatures in order to get uh, double usage out of their Enter the Battlefield effects. The idea for this came from that I wanted to play a blue-white blank deck, but I didn't want to play Brago, and... That comes from my personal uh, bias against extremely well-known commanders. Uh, I have nothing against people building them and playing them. It's just, for me personally, I've seen so many Brago decks and so many Prosh decks and so many Derevi decks and everything else that, to me, they've lost all their appeal. And I want to build decks that are using lesser-known commanders to show that there are more viable options in this format than most people give it credit for. And I've had this deck built for nearly a year now, I want to say. And I've, I've been loving it. It's a really fun deck to play. It is by no means a competitive EDH deck. If you're a CDH player, then you're not going to really find anything on my channel. Uh, at least not until I get my buddy Will back in town. And I can probably do a deck tech over his Sidisi Brood Tyrant deck. Which is built for a CDH environment. But this is more of a 75% uh, power level type deck. Uh, if you guys are familiar with that particular uh, theory. So... What does Afara, God of the Polis, do? Well, she's a 6-5 for 2, a white, and a blue. For legendary enchantment creature god with indestructible. As long as your devotion to Azorius is less than 7, she isn't a creature. But at the beginning of each upkeep, if you had another creature enter the battlefield under your control last turn, draw a card. So, this deck is playing a lot of enter the battlefield cards that we want to use on both our turns, and some that have flash to use on other people's turns in order to get maximum benefit out of Afara. And there's also a few other ways we can, you know, make sure that we have uh, her go off and trigger. So, that's the commander. Put her over here. And let's go ahead and breeze through the boring part of this deck, shall we? The lands. Command tower. Mana Confluence, Flooded Strand, Tundra, Hollowed Fountain, Prairie Stream, Attaker Waste, Nimbus Maze, Port Town, Glacial Fortress, Skycloud Expanse, Calciform Pools, Temple of Enlightenment, Azorius Chancery. Uh, Seat of the Synod is in here because we have a Trinket Mage. I actually need, I keep forgetting to order an Ancient Den for this deck, so I don't have both my Artifact Lands yet. Uh, because I keep forgetting to, but it's literally just here because there's a, uh, there's a Trinket Mage in here. And I need other targets besides Soul Ring. Halimar Depths, whoops, if I don't bump the camera. Halimar Depths is just, it's uh, kind of a ponder effect. It just helps set up our draws. Uh, not the best land in the world, but I'm a big fan of it. And again, I'm not going for a CDH deck here. Wasteland, because I had a spare. Temple of the False God, because irony. Reliquary Tower, we draw a lot of cards. And we don't want to be discarding them, so this helps. And then we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 islands. And 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 planes. Okay, into the mana rocks. We have Soul Ring, Thought Vessel. Again, we don't want to have a maximum hand size. Mindstone. Uh, I like that I can pitch it in the later game, like just sacrifice it and draw a card just to get use out of it when I don't, no longer need the mana. Azorius Signet, Falwar Stone, Sapphire Medallion, uh, the majority of this deck tends to be blue, or at least at one point it was. It might be shifted towards white now. Either way, it makes our, our blue spells cost one less. This might actually get taken out. Worn Power Stone, Ashnod's Altar, this is in here because I do have Karmic Guide and Revelark. And I'm not specifically trying to Karmic Guide Revelark loop, but if I do need to, it is an option, and I can use it to sack off creatures whose ETB effects are no longer relevant, or who I don't, don't really get a lot of benefit from flickering. So I can use it to sack them off, get some mana that I need, and move along. Okay, so I'm going to start, show off, uh, I think this is all the flash creatures in the deck. First things first, and it looks like I'm starting with the counterspell type flash creatures. Uh, this deck runs an overwhelming number of creatures as opposed to instant sorceries because uh, our commander likes to benefit from creatures entering the battlefield. So Spell Queller... Flash flying, when it ETBs, we exile a spell with a converted mana cost of four or less. Whenever it leaves the battlefield, we may cast, uh, sorry, whenever it leaves the battlefield, the owner may cast a spell without paying its mana cost. So, basically what we do with this is we use it to kind of soft counter something. And due to the two separate lines of text, and I'm sure a lot of you are familiar with the Oblivion Ring tricks, we can actually sacrifice it before 
uh, it has a chance to use it uh, before it uh, finishes. So it enters the battlefield, we choose a spell, it exiles, and then in response we sacrifice it, and now the spell is just gone forever, or we flicker it, and now the spell is just gone forever, and we can get to some kind of interesting shenanigans. I'm not going to be the best at explaining how the loop works on a technical level, uh, because I haven't personally done it too much, but it is something that we can do. Salamgar Sorcerer, Flash, Flying, Exploit, when it exploits a creature, we counter target creature spell. More often than not, it's going to exploit itself, and it acts as a 3 mana remove soul, but it's a 3 mana remove soul that also draws us a card from our commander. So, yep, uh, Void Mage Husher, I'm a big fan of this one because uh, not only can I use it to counter an activated ability, but... I can also bounce it back to my hand on its own whenever I play a spell, so I don't have to worry about trying to flicker it at random times. I can just play a spell, bring it back to my hand, and then reuse it whenever I need to. Perfect for this deck. Draining Welk. If you're not in Simic, you can't play Mystic Snake, but you can play Draining Welk. Flash Flying, 1-1 one, one for 6. Uh, when an ET beats you, counter spell, and then put X-1-1 one, one counters on the Draining Welk, where X is the counter spell's converted mana cost. So can get really nuts if you pair it with like a data navigator and just counter damn near everything they ever cast. And even if you just use it as a one-off, you counter a uh, scary spell or a really big spell, and you just get left with a big beater that you can use as a win condition. Okay, I think this is the bounce section. Uh, Harbinger of the Tides, 2-2 two, two for 2, we can pay, uh, flash it out for 2 additional. And when it ETBs, we bounce a tapped creature and opponent controls with their hand. So, they swing in this with something big, or their combo requires tap shenanigans, we can just harbinger the tides, get it back to their hand, and not worry about it. Venser, Shaper, Savant. Uh, snag this guy immediately after his reprint. He is he went down in price so much, and I still need a Vendillion click for this deck. Uh, another card I keep forgetting to order, but after Masters 25 drops, it'll be even cheaper. Not that it wasn't cheap enough already. But, um, pretty simple ETBs, we can return a spell or permanent to its owner's hand, so we can use this to kind of soft counter something, we can use it to bounce something, and the fact that it's any permanent means that if we manage to go infinite with a pairing Grand Drake and a Data Navigator, we can now bounce everything on their board back to their hands. Aven Mind Sensor. I adore this card. There are so many tutors and fetch lands in Commander, and a lot of people don't realize just how good this is against every type of deck. You're playing against the Boros deck. Well, their Sunforger doesn't really do a whole lot anymore. Uh, you're playing against the uh, you know, Azusa or the Titania deck. Well, their fetch lands are useless. If you're playing against any green deck, Cultivate, Kodama's Reach, Explosive Vegetation, none of that matters anymore because they can only dig through the top four. It shuts down Demonic Tutors. It shuts down fetch lands. It shuts down land fetch effects. It's such a good card, and it can hose so, so, so many decks. Portal Mage. I love stuff like this. Casual, janky, not the strongest, but a lot of fun because you can get into some interesting shenanigans of telling them, you know, no, that creature's attacking them. And again, if we can infinitely um, bounce it and flicker it at instant speed with a Data Navigator or Eldrazi Displacer, we can get to the point where we decide how every combat step goes, which is kind of interesting. Mizia Meddler. Okay, this card may seem like junk, but it has saved my game so many times. Just instant speed removal spells or any card that says, you know, do this to target creature or player, I they'll target me with something and I'll just redirect to Mizia Meddler. It's just, it seems like a horrible card and I can't explain to you why it is not as bad as I once thought it was, but trust me on this one, it can, uh, it can come in handy. Crafty Cut Purse. I was super excited to see this come out of Rivals of Ixalan because it's just fun. Whenever it enters the battlefield, each token that would be created under opponent's control this turn is created under your control instead. Okay, so there's an Edgar Markov deck in my meta that my wife owns. My wife also has a Hazazon Tamar deck, which likes to just, just vomit all of these Sand Warriors onto the battlefield and... It can get frustrating. There's a, there's a couple Krenko decks in my meta. There's some Elf decks in my meta. There's honestly just a lot that Crafty Cut Purse can come in handy with. Whether they're using their tokens as their win condition or the tokens are part of a combo type situation, in the case of my Andrew Star deck, Crafty Cut Purse can just shut down so much of it. Wonderful card. I was very happy to see it. This is the kind of stuff that comes out in standard sets that I get excited over. Alms Collector, another card I was very excited over. 
three, four for four flash. If an opponent would draw two or more cards, instead you and that player each draw a card. So this is really good against the mass draw decks, against the Niv Mizzets, the Arcanuses, the Azamis. And the Azami not so much because they're always only really drawing uh, one card at a time unless they have a, draw, a doubling effect on board, like an Alhammerance Archive or a Thought Reflection. But for the most part, there are decks that are trying to draw so many cards. If you're against Nekuzar, where they're trying to wheel everything, well, Nekuzar is not nearly as effective now. Because, yeah, um, they cast Wheel of Fortune. Everyone just cards their hand and draws seven, but actually, um, everyone else draws one, you draw your one, and then you draw one for each opponent that drew one. So you'll still take more damage off of Nekuzar than everyone else did, but the Nekuzar player is now left with virtually nothing in hand. Uh, it's just, it's a great card in white. It's not as good as a Notion Thief, obviously, but we're not in Esper. We're not in Demir, so we take what we get, and Alms Collector is really not that bad. Big fan of it. Selfless Squire, because a fog on a stick that turns into a wing condition can be, uh, it can be a lot of fun. Again, stuff like this is what I get excited over. That is all of the Flash creatures. Now we're into the uh, Sorcery Speed ETB effects, and it looks like we're moving into the removal side of things. Leon and Relic Water, ETBs, exile another uh, exile target artifact or enchantment when it leaves the battlefield, return it. Two separate lines of text again, so we can kind of get into these weird loops of permanently exiling things. Same thing with Fiend Hunter for creatures. Banisher Priest, while we can't loop it, is still a removal spell on a creature that'll draw us a card from our commander. Reflector Mage, this is one of my favorite cards to infinitely flicker in this deck because the look on people's faces when they're told that they cannot recast that card until the next go around, it's just so much fun. It seems like a standard only card and maybe, I don't even know if it sees play in Modern or not, I don't imagine it does, but I haven't followed Modern since Lantern Control was brand new to the format. So <laughs> I don't really know. But the card is just a lot of fun because of the weird effect it has in addition to its bounce effect. Big fan. Palace Jailer. I play this because I want the Monarch. <laughs> that is literally it. I try to introduce the Monarch in as many decks as I can. And Palace Jailer is an ETB effect. It's a removal on ETB. And it puts the Monarch in the game. So, yeah. I, uh, I like it. Rashad and Footpad, ETBs, each opponent sacks a permanent unless they pay two. Again, can get fun if we infinitely flicker it, but even if we don't go infinite with a flicker effect, if we just have this, a dead eye, and, you know, eight mana laying around, it can be a lot of fun. Uh, and to slowly clear their board every turn. Core Cartographer, basically the white wood elves, except it puts the card into play tapped, but even still, mana ramp in Azorius, I will take it. Same thing goes for Solemn Simulacrum, but it also draws his card whenever he dies. You have to play the sad robot. I mean, it's Commander. Perrin Grind Drake. I do not play uh, the Whale or Palancron or anything else like that. I don't really have the interest to. This is not a deck that I'm trying to win by going infinite. It's just an option that I have if I need to take it. So Perrin Grind Drake is more often than not just a free card draw from Afara, but it can act as a combo piece if I need it to. Wall of Omens, ETB draw a card, acts as a blocker. Mull Drifter, ETB draw two cards with Evoke. It's kind of interesting whenever I choose to evoke this and then immediately flicker it with something because then I'll get to use the ability twice and I'll keep, keep it in play, which is kind of interesting. Cloud Blazer is going to draw us two and gain us 200 ETBs. Uh, always loved this card from the minute I pulled it at uh, pre-release for Kaladesh. I thought it was a fun card, and I imagined right then and there it would see playing every Brago deck in the world. And, uh, yeah, same thing goes for Afara. Trinket Mage! This is here to go find Soul Ring. It's here to go find, uh, you know, one of our, our, our only artifact land. It's basically here just to tutor out something to help us make sure we have our mana. I need to put more targets in the deck for it, but at the moment it's perfectly fine. Phyrexian Metamorph. I had a spare. <laughs> Literally, I had a spare. I figured there's an ETB deck, so it's whatever ETB creatures are on the battlefield. Why not? Or Artifact, for that matter. Angel of Finality, because graveyard decks are so prevalent in this format that we need a way to deal with them. Sun Titan. You can't play an ETB deck in, an ETB deck in white that doesn't have a Sun Titan. It's almost criminal. Karma Guide plus Revel Arc. They are here to be used either together or individually. It doesn't really matter to me. 
If I happen to get them both, cool, but I don't honestly usually go for it. It's just something that happens to be in the deck. They're both just effective enough in this list on their own. And, you know, if I can happen to loop them, there's no reason not to. Okay, into the uh, non-creature stuff, we have Eerie Interlude. It can save our board from board wipes. It can be used just to get a lot of value by reusing every ETB effect. It's uh, just a good card. Panharmonicon. You cannot play an ETB deck without playing Panharmonicon. It just doesn't work. White Man Lion. So I lied. Uh, there are still some creatures in here. This is an enabler. I'll just usually cast this at, before someone ends their turn or someone's end step. Flicker. Bounce itself back to my hand. Draw a card on the next step. Keep it the Farah. And use it as a little mini draw engine. Salt Skitter. It's got a ex it's basically going to exile itself until end of turn every time another creature ETBs. So on an opponent's turn, they get something, they play something, this exiles, comes back into the end step, next upkeep, draw a card. Fairy Artisans, because we want to hit those Ephara triggers, and it can be really fun if someone else has a lot of ETB effects. Crystal Shard lets us reuse a creature's ETB effect and or save it from an incoming removal spell. Brago, even though he's not my commander, is solid inside the 99 to basically flicker my entire board. Conjurer's Closet, because end step flicker. Miss Metal Witch, because slow flicker, but still in our colors and still worth playing. Altrazi Displacer and Dead Eye Navigator are both instant flicker effects that return them immediately. The Navigator is clearly the better choice in this particular deck, but they're both functional enough to making sure that we get multiple uses from our creatures. Library of Lang is another Trinket Mage target that gives us no maximum hand size. Preordain, Cantrip, Brainstorm, Cantrip. Not too much to say. I'm trying to get this done before it hits 20 minutes so I don't have to piece together a couple videos. Counterspell package, we are in Counterspell, Render Silent, and Forbid, just to ensure that our opponents don't do anything we don't like. Removal, we have Path to Exile, Swords to Plow Shares, Rapid Hybridization, Dark Steel Mutation, and Council's Judgment for Spot Removal. Board Wipes, Cyclonic Rift. We're in blue. We have to play Cyclonic Rift. It's just a law of being a blue player. Day of Judgment, because she Board Wipes. I actually do need to get... I want to replace this with a Wrath of God using the From the Vault Wrath art because flavor. Supreme Verdict. Again, if you're in Azorius, this is a card you just have to play. It's one of the best Board Wipes you can possibly play in the colors. And then Fubigate, because... I don't mind paying the one additional for my board wipe, and if I'm against a token deck, this can just gain me so much life and ensure that I stay in the game for as long as possible. So yeah, that was my Ifara, God of the Polis deck. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed watching it. If you guys want to see more commander content, please let me know. I have quite a few commander decks, and I would be more than happy to do deck techs over them. I have friends who have a lot of their own decks, and they're building new decks every single day, and I can easily ask them to, if I can do a deck tech over the video, or, you know, let them actually do the deck tech on the channel. So if you guys want to see more commander deck techs, please comment down below. If you saw anything that you thought I could add to the deck, or you, you know of anything you think I could add to the deck to improve it, you saw an interaction that I didn't see, or you saw something that maybe didn't work the way that I thought it does, comment that down below too. I would love to see some discussions regarding... Uh, practically any commander that gets put out and I would love to see suggestions if you have anything that you would like to see me build in the future but this has been my Afara God of the Polis blue white flicker blink ETB uh, shenanigans deck I'm a real fan of it it's a great uh, I think Afara is a great commander in her own way and in her own right at her own power level and I would love to see uh, if you guys have built decks around the Theros gods uh, let me know, you know, post videos, uh, post in the comment section where we can see your deck list, where we can see your tapped out list, your YouTube video. I don't mind that at all. Just, you can shamefully and shamelessly, I don't, depending on how you feel, plug yourself in the comment section. I would love to see what you guys are brewing, but until next time, peace and take care.